What's up everybody, welcome back to Words of Wisdom. Here we are on day five, Proverbs five. My son, give attention to my wisdom. And we know the wisdom is the son of God. My son, give attention to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding that you may observe discretion and your lips may reserve knowledge because without wisdom and understanding which comes from God which is Jesus and the Holy Spirit giving us the wisdom and understanding incline your ear to my understanding that you may observe discretion and your lips may reserve knowledge For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and smoother than oil is her speech. So God's telling us to observe discretion. Let's discern the truth of God's word. Let's discern the truth of how he wants us to live. That you may, must, let me just start in the beginning. My son, give attention to my wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding, that you may observe discretion, and your lips may reserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and smoother than oil is her speech. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. So there's a lot here in these last couple of lines for the lips of an, an adulteress drip honey so this is referring to the foolish virgins see it's all about the wise and foolish virgins for the lips of an, an adulteress drip honey and smoother than oil is her speech this is the false doctrines we read in 2 Timothy 4.3 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accum accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. And this is what we see right here with the adulteress, the foolish virgins, the, the churches, the, the believers that aren't ready, that aren't right with God. But the lips of an adulteress drip honey, it's the false doctrines, the feel good messages. And smoother than oil is her speech. But in the end, she's bitter as wormwood. And what is wormwood? Revelation 8, 10 through 11. The third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven. The stars represent angels. Burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers. And it springs of waters. And we know water represents people. The name of the star is called wormwood. And a third of the waters became wormwood. And many men died from the waters because they were made bitter or made wormwood. And this is the fall of Satan. The fall of Satan from the kingdom of God. Which uh, represents the tribulation time. In this, in this proverb. For the lips of... For the lips of an adulteress drip honey in her, and smoother than oil is her speech. This is the false churches, the false doctrines, the feel-good prosperity message. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. And we read in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword. And piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. But in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword, representing the word of God, discerning between 
whether we're inclining our ear to understanding and observing discretion, or to whether we're giving in and listening to the adulteress whose, whose uh, sermons and speeches and words sound good, but in the end is bitter as wormwood, represented Satan in the tribulation time. Sharp as a two-edged sword, her feet go down to death, her steps take hold of Sheol, which is death, that's where the grave, that's where everyone goes when we die. She does not ponder the path of life, her ways are unstable, she does not know it. Speaking of the adulteress, so this is speaking of this is speaking of the foolish virgins, the, the Christians that aren't right with God, the Christians that aren't ready. But in the end, she is bitter as one, one sharp as a two-edged sword, because the word of God is what judges us. Her feet go down to death. This is speaking of the foolish virgins. Her steps take hold of Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. The path of life is Yeshua's the life, the path, the narrow path is his ways, his instructions. As we see in the beginning of the chapter, she does not ponder the path of life. Her ways are unstable. She does not know it. So, so the foolish virgins, the see, many people think they're right with God. Many people, and I'm not saying I'm right with God. I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong with God, but but many Christians or people in the mainstream Christian church just follow their preachers and and are a part of this. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways are unstable. She does not know it. Many people believe they're walking in the ways of God. Many people believe they're living for him but are you really are you living for him according to the bible or are you living for him according to how you want to live for him now then my sons listen to me and do not depart from the words of my mouth keep your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house. Or you will give your vigor to others and your years to the cruel one. And strangers will be filled with your strength. And strength, that's power. Jesus said, you will receive power once the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that strength is what... uh was spoken of in one of the other scriptures I can't recall off the top of my head but you'll give your vigor this is the, the oil the oil the Holy Spirit to others and your years to the cruel one it's foolish virgins they don't have the oil they're giving their vigor to others and strangers will be filled with your strength that's the oil the Holy Spirit and your hard earned goods will go to the house of an alien and you groan at your final end when your flesh and your body are consumed and you say how have I hated instruction and my heart spurned reproof I have not listened to the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear to my instruction my instructors I was almost in utter ruin in the midst of the assembly and the congregation. And this is just another confirmation that this is what it's talking about. In the midst of the assembly and the congregation, that's the seven churches. That's the body of Christ. I was almost in utter ruin in the midst of the assembly and the congregation. That's the foolish virgins. Drink water from your own cistern, and fresh water from your own well. 
This is speaking of the Word of God, taking in the Word of God from Him and from the Holy Spirit rather than rather than just following these doctrines of the foolish virgins, these doctrines of the the Jezebel, Balaam, they're spoken of in Revelation 2 and 3. Drink water from your own cistern and fresh water from your own well. Should your springs be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets, let them be yours alone and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. Which I believe is referring to Yeshua, actually. As a loving hind and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times. Be exhilarated always with her love. For why should you, my son, be exhilarated with an adulteress and embrace the bo bosom of a foreigner? See, the adulteress is the, the foolish virgin, the, the uh, the foolish church, those that aren't ready, but instead follow God alone and rejoice in the wife of your youth. For the ways of a man are before the eyes of Yahuwah, and he watches all his paths. Take that in. For the ways of a man are before the eyes of Yahuwah, before the eyes of the Lord. And he watches all his paths. God sees everything we do. God knows everything we do. And we've all screwed up. We've all screwed up along the way. Even since coming to faith. I know no one's perfect. For the ways of a man are before the eyes of Yahuwah. And he watches all his paths. And this in itself should instill the fear of the Lord in you. Because without the fear of the Lord, you don't have wisdom, you don't have true repentance. His own iniquities will capture the wicked. And he will be held back with the cords of his sin. He will die for lack of instruction. We read in Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you, you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. And what is it speaking of? We get that in the rest of this verse. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. This is speaking of one of the churches. Since you have forgotten the law of God, I will also forget your children, your congregation, your offspring. He will die for lack of instruction. In the greatness of his folly, he will go astray. But let us be different. Let us stay on a straight and narrow path. The path is narrow. Jesus said, few find it. There's many people that believe or claim to believe. But do you really? As, let's ask ourselves, do we really believe? Do we have do we really have true faith? Is the faith that we have dis displayed through our actions? And what can we do for the kingdom of God? Because if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. We're living in the last days. There's much work that needs to be done. Many people that need to be reached. Jesus said the gospel will be preached in the whole world. And then the end will come. And we're very close to that.
If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, call out to him. This is end of day five. Words of Wisdom, part five. Thank you for tuning in. Repent and believe in the gospel. Call out to Jesus. We're almost there. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Shalom.